So we use a lot of biocontrols in our greenhouse. Not as many as a lot of folks, but a lot more than, than most. And um, today I'm just going to talk about some of the biocontrols. I had a ladybug earlier, but it flew away, so I don't have any uh, visual aids right now. But uh, we use a few different insect types in here. Uh, the, the primary ones we use are ladybugs, okay? And um, they do a really nice job of just keeping populations low, so long as the ladybugs are happy and growing. Now that can be a real pain because a lot of the time the ladybugs that you order in the mail are harvested in hibernation. So this is California or wherever. They're overturning rocks, they're scooping out these big masses of hibernating ladybugs. So when they show up at your doorstep, after you know being woken from their slumber, being thrown in the mail and shipped to your doorstep, they don't always want to cooperate so much. So uh, really make sure you're getting them from a reputable supplier. And don't expect too much if you're putting them down in the fall or early winter, because a lot of the time you'll release them in your greenhouse and they'll just kind of crawl into a corner and try and hibernate for a few months. So uh, about now is actually kind of uh, the, the perfect time of year for ladybugs and greenhouse uh, aphid control. They're all kind of waking up and wandering around and looking for stuff to eat. So uh, you'll probably in, in our other videos see lots of ladybugs wandering around on the leaves. Um, they do a nice job. I wouldn't invest it too much in them. We put a few thousand in here every four to five months really. And you know putting probably between five and ten thousand in every four to, to five months does a great job of basically keeping our populations really steady. We also use a few different kinds of wasps. They're called aphidous wasps, okay? And they're parasitic wasps. So what these wasps do is they fly around and they basically just kind of um, land on leaf surfaces. They're drawn to certain colors. They're drawn to certain um, things. They'll land on that leaf. They'll wander around. And as soon as they sense that there's an aphid, they'll walk, walk up and their little antenna will be going. They'll kind of tap that aphid, figure out what it is, and then they'll swing their um, abdomen around and uh, with a big ovipositor and put just penetrate that aphid and lay an egg inside it. And if you sit there long enough, you actually get to see this kind of thing. It's pretty freaky stuff. But it's pretty neat because in about two or three days, that aphid is dead and there's a little hole in it where the baby wasp came crawling out pretty neat stuff. And there's a whole bunch of aphidous wasps that you can use in your greenhouse. Um, they have varying levels of effectiveness depending on what kind of aphids you've got. So I would recommend uh, going to like Arbico Organics, something like that to order your wasps and make sure you're matching them to the aphid problems that you've got. We have used green lacewing in the, in the past with kind of mixed results. I wouldn't necessarily recommend green lacewing for everyone. They're worth trying out. If they prove effective for you, they're great because they're generalists. That means they're not focusing on any one pest. They're focusing on a whole host of different insect pests. And you can essentially release them and they'll wander around and they'll eat eight white flies and they'll eat aphids and they'll eat, eat basically anything that they come across. So they're great if you can get them going and if they're effective for you. They've just never been too effective in our particular greenhouse. So there are a lot of other biocontrols out there that you can use. I've already talked in one of my other videos about Bavaria bassiana, a fungal spore. There are other fungi that um, can be applied as a spray uh, that can essentially destroy insects and they're definitely worth looking into, um, as well as some soil bacteria. Some soil bacteria can also destroy insects. So definitely check out biocontrols, they're a great way to keep um, insect populations under control. Now if they explode on you, you're going to have to find something else. Um, and that means you'll probably have to spray with something at some point. So the trick is to find a really nice, healthy, effective spray that you can use in your greenhouse as well. If you're interested in learning more about how you can spray safely and effectively, check out our other uh, video on pesticides. For aquaponics folks, it's very important to know how much of a particular pesticide your system can handle, especially when it comes to your fish health. Let's get it home. Oh, let's get it all home.